What's up? This is Alex Nagy doing the Moto Hub live chat. Waiting for people to tune in. I'm doing good. I'm excited to be doing this. It'll be cool. My Christmas was good. My, uh, my girlfriend came out to California, so she's here with me, and then uh, spent it with some family, went and rode in the hills. It was a, a good fun day, nice day of riding, good day with the family. I am 22 years old. You're welcome for my time, of course. <laughs> my first bike was a JR50, and I rode the wheels off of that thing. And then I got a Husky 50, and then from there a KTM 50, and then KX65, KX85. What's the plan for 2019? Uh, my plan for 2019 is to compete in all of the AMA Supercross races, whether that's on a 250 or a 450, I'm not sure yet, but um, I'll be doing them all for sure, and then as many outdoor nationals as I can do. Uh, what different bike brands have I ridden on? Um, I've ridden everything from Suzuki to KTM, to Husqvarna when I was over in Europe. Um, what else? I got a Honda now. Uh, pretty much everything, I think besides a Yamaha really, that's the only thing that I've, I don't think I've ever really owned a Yamaha or ridden a Yamaha too much. Yep, still running the 509 this year. Uh, only time I have ever raced in Canada was uh, for the Toronto Supercrosses. Other than that, I think that's the only time I've been to Canada, too. Um, why did I pick the number 509? Uh, originally, I was number 519, and then um, when it came time to get my pro card, someone had 519, which is actually my birthday, May 19th. So uh, for like the... Uh, NMA races, I could never get 519 either, so I was always 509. So I got 509 my first year racing pro, and then I just kept it ever since. I think 519 opened it up, but or opened up, but at that point I just stuck with 509. Um, if I'm gonna ride a 250, which coast would I do? Um, at this point, honestly, I'm not sure. Uh, it just depends. We'll we'll see. I'll I'll be doing 450, and then kind of decide from there. So, uh, what's your gnarliest crash? That's a good one. Um, let's see, my gnarliest crash. Uh, I've had I've had quite a few, just like anyone else. But um, one that sticks out to me pretty good was uh, at a Winter Am in Dade City one year. I it was on a super mini and um, grabbed a handful off the lip of a jump. And ended up wheeling into the face of the jump and did like half of a front flip and just disintegrated myself landing upside down <laughs> so it was pretty bad that one always sticks out um favorite supercross track uh let's see every year i always look forward to um indie supercross that's I, I don't know if it's because the the dirt or what it is but um the past few years it's been kind of more hard pack but my i think the first year i did it in 14 and the next year it was always pretty good soft dirt and um by then that late in the series they're always changing up the changing up the track layouts a lot more than when they're on the west coast uh this year for traveling to the races um for west coast i'll be pitting with skivvy which will be cool colin morrison's team and then um but for the most part i'll probably still be uh traveling and driving in my van to all the races so i think skivvy's only doing the west coast so all that stuff is pretty close then anyways and then um for uh 
for some of the farther rounds. Hopefully I can figure something out, but for right now it looks like just driving, driving in the van. Um, best ever race finish. Uh, in outdoors, it would be a, I think I got a 20th in a moto and then a 21st overall. And then uh, Supercross, I think the closest I've been to making a main is one spot out in the LCQ. So hopefully I can get that, get in the main this year and improve on that. Um, sleeping in the van too. Yep, of course. Always sleeping in the van for the most part. So like 90% of the time I've been I've been out in California since uh, around Thanksgiving and vanned it for like the first 25 nights. But now my girlfriend's out here, so we're we got a hotel a couple times, which is nice. So that's good. Um, have I ever been to Loretta Lynn's? Yeah, I did. Um, I went to Loretta Lynn's. I think my first year was 2008 in the 65 class. And then uh, 2008, 2010, and 2011. So three years I've been there. I uh, I never really did anything too remarkable there. I think my best moto finish was like an 11th, so it, it, it wasn't really anything good for me. Um, have I ever been to Massachusetts? Yes, I've been to Massachusetts um, for Southwick National and then um, also for the Foxborough Supercrosses. I've been to Massachusetts. How did I manage to turn pro at such a young age? Yeah, 16 years old is, is right. So when I was uh, when I was 15, I was racing Super Mini, and uh, I actually ended up getting hurt that year at Mini O's, and I was kind of just like over it and ready to to start fresh and, and get off little bikes. So when I got off um, when I got off little bikes, I got a Cowie 250F, and uh, I wasn't even sure what I wanted to do with racing or my career or life or anything at that point, other than I wanted to race locally and try and make money racing. So at uh, 15, I started racing the like 250A class and all that stuff uh, at like local tracks. And um, once I started doing better, I was like, all right, I can I can start hitting pro ams. So I did uh, some pro ams, and uh, those were a pretty good rude awakening for me. I it took me took me definitely a few of them to to get used to it and then um i was able to get my pro card relatively pretty quick score all my points so that uh when i turned 16 i was able to um do the last two outdoor nationals of 2012 and then also the super crosses on 250 west in 2013 and then i've been going ever since then uh where am i from i'm from richmond illinois uh, did I go to the 2018 Southwick National? No, I was not at Southwick this year. Um, any other mini O races? Yeah, I did mini O's, uh, I think from 2007 till 2011, so five years. And uh, that's still to this day, that's my, I think that's the coolest amateur national that there is. Um, I always love the Supercross portion and then also the Motocross, and I always seem to do pretty good there. I think I won a. Uh, in my second year there in 08, I got a second in like 65, and I think Jordan Smith won it. And then I think two years after that, I, I won a moto there, so that was pretty cool. And then I think I got another second overall in the main, so I always did did pretty good there. Um, am I good in the mud? Yeah, I'd say I'm a pretty good mud rider, especially from being from Illinois. It's always raining or not the best weather other than in the summer so i'm, I'm oh, i always enjoy mud races and look forward to uh riding in the mud uh favorite supercross memory that would probably be so far uh when i made my first night show at 16 that was pretty cool because the first half of the season was pretty rough for me and it it definitely was it was tough to stick with it at times but i was glad that i did and and uh, it was cool to do that for the for the first time and then to keep building from there. Did I finish high school? Um, when I was in eighth grade, I, I, I went to public school all the way until uh, I graduated eighth grade. And then for um, high school, I was homeschooled and I did that through the American school program, which is pretty tough. But I managed to get it done all, on time and graduate from that. Big Air Ed, what's up? <laughs> uh, being in Illinois, you're pretty much centralized. East or West Coast Supercross matter to me. Um, you know, yeah, it's uh, it's nice being in Illinois because, like you said, it's it's central. Um, but as early as I can every year, I try and get out to California because for Supercross, that's um, 
that's pretty much the the place to be at least it has been the last seven years or whatever that i've been doing it it seems like uh every year it kind of gets less and less tracks to ride but um so when i'm not in illinois i'm in southern california and then as soon as everything goes back uh the series moves i i end up back in illinois and it's nice because it's pretty much um in the middle to travel to wherever so whether it, it's to whether you got to go to Massachusetts or New York or you got to go to Florida or whatever, it's a it's a lot better than driving from California. Uh, Unadilla isn't too bad for you. I love Unadilla. Unadilla is actually uh, one of my favorite outdoor tracks. Um, Unadilla and Washougal, I think, are, are probably the two coolest outdoor tracks on the on the circuit right now. And I hope that they I hope they stick around forever and I hope they keep them good and and keep the soil natural. Am I good in the sand? Um, I don't know. I, I, uh, I, that's a, that's a tough one. I'd say I'm, I'm fair in the sand every year at Daytona. I look forward to Daytona and I guess that's kind of like a, a sandy supercross, but like with, uh, and, and even when I'm in Southern California, I ride as much sand as I could at, at the sand track that used to be around here that isn't there anymore. So I'd say, I'd say I'm, I'm, I'm pretty fair in the sand, not good, not bad, kind of in the middle, uh, favorite motocross track. Um, other than I love riding at the, the track that I got back home, um, I'd say, yeah, Unadilla. Unadilla is probably the best. Uh, what part of Illinois, Richmond, Illinois? It's like um, about 60 or 70 miles uh, northwest of Chicago. What's your advice for a beginner? Um, my advice for a beginner racer would probably to just be to, um, to have fun and, and uh, never never try to get too caught up in in trying to be cool or whatever just do your own thing and if if you think that's cool then you keep at it and you ride where you want you ride what you want you wear what you want and uh yeah at the end of the day just just have fun and do it for yourself and and make sure it's uh it's always a good time uh who'd i look up to when i was little um i'd say uh of course my dad my dad was always a really good role model for me and i always looked up to him a lot and then um I was always pretty big into like watching freestyle motocross and stuff like that. So like people like, like Seth Enslow or, uh, Mad Mike Jones or, or people like that were always, always people that I thought were really cool growing up. And, uh, they were, I guess it's not people who race. So it's, it's kind of different. I always liked McGrath, um, as well, but, uh, growing up, I really didn't even watch too many, too many races when I was younger. It was all like crusty and, free ride videos, freestyle videos, stuff like that. Uh, what gear do I wear? Currently I'm wearing AXO, but uh, I'm no longer with AXO because they kind of um, pulled out of their uh, deals in the United States. So um, that's probably going to change pretty soon, and hopefully I'll be able to show that off more here uh, once it gets all sorted out. Uh, big sponsors helping me out for Supercross this year. Yeah, my, my biggest uh, personal sponsor would be Like You Live. Uh, Rufus has helped me out big the past two years with uh, getting me bikes and, and making sure I'm all set up with that. And without him, there'd be no way I'd still be able to make it happen. So uh, Like You Live has helped me out a bunch. That's a huge sponsor of mine. And then um, also Colin Morrison with the Skivvy team is helping out a lot this year. And um, showy helmets I'm still with, Pirelli, EVS, and uh, a, a bunch of my other sponsors too as well. Uh, do I prefer arena cross, motocross, or supercross? Um, I would say that I prefer supercross the most out of anything. Growing up, I rode a lot of arena cross just because as, a, as an amateur and being from Illinois where it's always cold, arena cross is kind of the, the way you go. And I, I loved arena cross growing up when I was on little bikes. And I think arena cross is really cool too, but um, on big bikes, I never never got the chance to do it. I was always doing super cross, which uh, I love super cross. It's my, I think that's my favorite thing for for riding. And um, motocross is cool too. It's just a, you're kind of either a motocross guy or a super cross guy. And I think I've always kind of leaned more towards super cross. Uh, what goggles do I wear? At the moment, I'm wearing X brand. Um, that might possibly change too. We'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, have any pets? Yeah, we have a Doberman back home called, uh, call it Rocks. And uh, it's pretty much about as smart as a box of rocks. So it, it fits it pretty well, <laughs> Rocks.
Have I ever raced any motocross races? Uh, yeah, the, um, uh, let's see, the, the past, yeah, since 2012, I've raced the, uh, pro outdoor series, so I think the first year I did three, and then, um, in 2012, and then since then I've done a lot of them throughout the years, and then also some local races here and there and stuff like that. Um, does your dog go to the track with you? I think one time we brought the dog with us to the track and it was good. She's a good traveler, but um, for the most part, uh, dog stays at home. <laughs> see if I, I think I answered all everything. I'm scrolling through to see if I missed anything. <clears throat> oh, I think my my first ever sponsor, I think I missed that one. Um my first ever sponsor was a who was my first sponsor? I'm really going to have to think that one through. It was a local shop called uh, SF Performance back in Illinois that used to be around, and uh, they helped me out a lot. They were really cool and local local to me and close. I think that was my, my first sponsor. Also, maybe a um, Westergaard who used to make backboard number plates for chest protectors. He gave me one of those when I was little, and I think that was like one of the first people that ever gave me something and said they were a sponsor. Uh, what's the one technique you constantly work on? Um, I'd say the one technique I constantly work on is trying to hit turns fast, which is easier said than done for me. I, I seem to be a lot better of a jumper, but uh, always always working on corner speed and uh, also just, I guess, more like um, also like mental technique, like trying to trying to be ready for whatever whatever you got to do. Do I wear a chest protector or neck brace? Um, Never worn a neck brace, always worn a chest protector. I think I'm one of the last few that still run a chest protector, and I, uh, I, I love wearing a chest protector. It's A lot of people kind of hate on them sometimes, but they're the best thing you could ever have when you end up crashing. So rather, rather uh, have it on than not have it on, and once you're used to it, it's not too bad. Uh, favorite obstacle on a Supercross track? Um, let's see, favorite obstacle. I would have to say probably whenever there's like a like a really good rhythm section or or actually I'd say my favorite obstacle is when they have the bridge jumps where it's like a over under thing where the landing's a real sharp tabletop and the takeoff is a super steep takeoff those are always something that I look forward to cuz it's it's pretty technical and you've got to time it good and it gives you pretty big air time uh, what age did I start riding? I think I started riding at like four years old. So I've been I've been doing it almost my whole life at this point now. So riding bicycles and riding dirt bikes at four. Scroll through, see if I missed any more questions. First bike. Yeah, I actually, uh, I do have siblings that ride. Um, my, my oldest sister, Jamie, she, uh, her and my dad would actually always go to the races when I was younger, when I was, before I started riding. And uh, my sister's been riding her whole life too and still does to this day. And uh, she was always pretty good. But uh, nowadays she doesn't get to ride as much as she'd want to, but she still rides whenever she gets a chance. And then I got uh, two other sisters, but they never got into riding. Um, still really young. What do I see myself doing after racing? Um, I'm not sure. I've been trying to put a lot of thought into that. And um, I don't know. I've always been interested in becoming a cop or a police officer or something like that. So I think, uh, I think that'll be something that I'll try and pursue. What other hobbies do I have? Um, 
Well, besides racing, I I love riding. That's uh that's probably my my favorite thing that I do for fun or whatever would be just riding whether it's uh free riding or freestyle or in my backyard whatever. Um I'd say whenever it comes down to like to what to do, that's uh that's that's always something I look forward to along with like um longboarding or uh riding BMX. Um what other things do I like to enjoy to, to do? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yo-yoing, that's a that's a good hobby that I'm pretty good at. Right, unicycle, juggling, yo-yoing, pretty much all clown stuff. <laughs> um, what do I do in my free time? Uh, let's see, in my free time, I, I try and spend all my free time with my girlfriend for the most part or with my family. And uh, I'd say, I guess, in my free time when I can, it would be like, uh, I like to... I like to draw or like artwork and stuff like that. I'm not not good at all or like playing a playing a good video game is always pretty good. Whether it's uh Fortnite or PUBG or whatever, it's that's that always is pretty fun to do in free time. Uh my sister just joined the app. Cool. Um did a knick knack, right? I think I saw a video. Yeah, doing knack knacks. That's that's always one of my favorite things to do. My uh some of my friends always call me Big Knack as a joke because, like, whenever we end up going riding or whatever, that's, like, my my go-to trick is to do a knack-knack. And uh, McGrath did it best for sure, but I'm trying to keep it alive. Uh, who do I ride with for training for Supercross? Um, no one really. I mean, at Milestone, there's, there's always a bunch of people there, but... Uh, I kind of do my own thing. I don't. I don't really ever um, get in with people and ride with them. Like whenever A Ray is there, I'll I'll try and follow him for as long as I can and, and stay as close to him as whatever or whatever, whoever else I see is is going good there and and, and someone that I could try and uh, follow or latch on to. Um, a morning person or a night owl? Uh, I would definitely say probably a night owl. It seems like whenever the Supercross season is going. Um, I, I'm always driving through the night and then whenever you're driving through the night you end up like not even sleep until the next day and then your mornings get all rough and off or whatever so I'd say I'm, I'm a night owl but the since I've been out in California I've been pretty good morning person so I don't know maybe a little bit of both uh did you hear my bike's too lit um I've heard a little bit of my bike's too lit so uh Enig Knapp is cool he's funny last year with uh with Skivvy, he was on the team, and, and he was always hating on my bike, so my bike wasn't lit last year, but it's all good. I thought it was pretty cool. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. I mean, you never want your bike to be too lit, you know? Um, what year did I go to Southwick National? Uh, I think 2012, 2013, and then um, I don't know if they – I think it skipped a couple of years and then whenever it came back, I don't think I, I don't think I've done it since, since 13, maybe, uh, does my girlfriend travel with me to all the races? Um, unfortunately she doesn't, she's got a, a real job, so she's always got to go to work, but, um, she has off weekends and Fridays, so she goes to as many races as she can. And then, uh, she's got some time off from work right now, which is good. Um, as far as a mechanic, uh, I had one of my friends that was out here in California with me for about the first month that I was out, but, um, no real set mechanic, just my dad comes to as many races as he can. And then I do all pretty much all my casual everyday bike work on my own, whether it's tightening the chain, changing tires, swapping suspension or parts or whatever, all the all the pretty simple stuff I do all on my own and I, I kind of like doing it on my own because then your life's in your own hands and you've got no one to blame other than yourself so you really I keep the attention to the detail as much as I can. Uh, did I follow the Canadian Rockstar Triple Crown Series this year? Um, I saw it a little bit. I saw uh, I think like Thompson won the 450s and I think Pettis won the the 250s if you're talking about the the indoor series the outdoor series i don't i don't um remember too much other than uh i don't know i watch a few of the races i watch as, as much of the um outdoor stuff on tv as i can two stroke or four stroke uh i definitely say two stroke two stroke is way better um four stroke is like 
I don't know, it's too expensive, too complicated. It's definitely the most competitive thing, which is why, you know, everyone's riding it. It's the easiest thing to ride. But as far as like for if I were to just be riding for fun or done racing or whatever, I would be two stroke all the way. Even back home now, I've got a 2003 KX250 two stroke. And I think that's like the best bike ever made. And uh, I think if things were back to being cheaper and back to being simpler, the sport would be pretty much where it was instead of now you've got bikes that are 10 grand and who wants to go spend $10,000 for a dirt bike that is all electronics and no one knows how to rebuild unless you're specific for that and anyone can go buy a two stroke for 1500 bucks off Craigslist and rebuild it themselves and ride it until it explodes again and then fix it so for cheap um favorite movie uh my favorite movie would probably have to be I like the Warriors. That's a really good movie. Um let's see what else. Uh the free riding movie or freestyle movie Chapter 1. That's always been my favorite. Chapter 1 is really good. Um and also uh the Seth Enslow movie The Hard Way. Let's see what else. Um I'm thinking thinking of what I'm always watching. I don't know, I'll have, to, I'll have to get back to that one with some more of my favorite movies, but uh, The Warriors, a really good one. Lords of Dogtown, there we go. That's another good movie that I like a lot. Uh, which top rider do you look up to the most, uh, their riding style? Let's see. Um, I always loved watching Stuart ride when I was at Supercrosses. That was always really like awesome to be able to see in person and to be able to watch someone ride a dirt bike that fast. That was really cool. Um, I think the the next closest person like nowadays at, at a Supercross to riding like Stuart was would probably be Roxon, but uh, Stuart was like that every single time that you saw him ride. He was always on the edge, going and ripping. Um, but uh, top riders I look up to the most for riding style. Uh, yes, yeah, so like I said, Stuart for for like watching was always really cool. I think uh, Colt Nichols has got a really cool riding style. Um, let's see who else I always watch that has pretty good style. Bradley Taft always had pretty good riding style. I'm going all off of people that I watch ride it. <laughs> would watch ride at Milestone in the past years that would always look like they were, they were really uh, flowing good and riding good. Um, and yeah, Josh Grant was always always got really good riding style too. Um, uh, let's see, what's the sign merch? Uh, that'll be a set of signed goggles from yours truly, me. <laughs> Katie, my sister, asking that. Uh, anyone else on the Like You Live team with you? Uh, no, Like You Live, it's it's not a team. That's just a, a personal sponsor of mine that is uh, helping only me out. The um, Skivvy team is, is totally separate from that. And uh, there'll be two other guys on it with me, maybe more. I don't know. I'm not sure. And, and uh, they'll they'll probably announce that here soon. Uh, see yourself, MX Race, sure, not any other games. Yeah, I did see myself in the MX vs ATV Supercross game. Um, that's it's awesome. I I love being in that game. And uh, I think maybe they have another one out that I'll, or a new one coming out that I'll I'll probably be into. And uh, I, I don't know if it came out yet or if it didn't, but every year in um, Phoenix is where their studios is. So uh, I always go there and get to play the old games and the new games. And uh, it's always really cool and really fun. Uh, East Rutherford, uh, I'm not sure if that's on the schedule or not. I, I can't even keep up with everything. I go weekend by weekend once it starts. <laughs> but uh, if East Rutherford's on the schedule, I'll for sure be there. I don't know if it's that or Foxborough. Uh, what made me decide to stop rocking the long hair? It was just time. It was it was getting out of control. It was, it was so long that uh, I was just over it, and it was too much uh, too much to take care of, especially living the van life. So I just decided to chop it off. Um, does my girlfriend race or ride? No, she doesn't race or ride. So she uh, she is not um, not wasn't really. Uh, didn't even know much about motocross other before she met me or whatever other than that her uh her dad wrote a little bit but that was about it um 
did I donate my long hair? No, I didn't. We were saying that I, I should have kept it around until uh, St. Ulrich's and, and donated it this year. But uh, I was so ready to get rid of it that I just chopped it all off. <clears throat> yeah, like I said before, I haven't been to Southwick National in a while. Foxborough Supercross is always a good one. Uh, did I have the chance to do any other sports growing up? Um, I, I was never really big into uh, school sports at all. I didn't really care too much about that. I was always really good in school and, and uh, liked learning and getting good grades and stuff like that. But when it came to, like, uh, sports at school, I had absolutely zero interest in that. Um, I think the only sport I ever really did that I, that I liked was, like, snowboarding. And I would snowboard uh, before I started going south for the winters. I would get a season pass to the local ski resort and pretty much go snowboarding every single day of the uh, winter season. And I always love snowboarding. I still think it's it's awesome and really cool, but I kind of cut it out cold turkey. I haven't been snowboarding since probably like 10 years, it seems like. And I every time I drive through Colorado or I see my friends going to Big Bear or wherever in California, it's I'm, I'm always wanting to go and but it's just so tough when you got to get a new snowboard because your old one's like three feet tall and now you're a foot taller than that and everything. So hopefully one of these days I'll be able to go snowboarding somewhere cool and some nice good powder. Um, what number was I at Loretta Lynn's and Minio's? Uh, at Minio's I was always 519. I think my first year at Loretta's I was 51 for the 51 and 519. And then um, the following time that I went, someone had 51, so I took 55 because the 5 and the 5 are pretty, pretty good, cool-looking number. And then uh, I went the following year, and then someone had 55 that I couldn't get it, so I was 56 the last year that I did it, which I wasn't too big of a fan of the 56 number, but the 55 and 51 were pretty cool. Uh, what's the goal for this year, Supercross and Motocross? Uh, my goal for Supercross is definitely to make a main. That's uh, the one thing that's kind of been getting away from me quite a bit. So hopefully I can uh, check that off this year. And then um, in motocross, it would be to make as many rounds as I can. Definitely get in at Redbud because that's another thing that's been getting away from me through the years. So if I can, uh, if I can do those two things this year, that would be really good to, to get that done. Um, if I didn't end up so deep in moto, what do I think I'd be doing right now? I don't know. That's a good question. I, I sometimes ask myself that too. And if I, if I would have, uh, stayed in public school or whatever and, and, uh, not been riding or racing, I think either way I would still be, uh, I'd still be riding like as much as I could, whether it was like, like having a track at home is, is one of the coolest things to have because it's, it's something that you can always do. You can always ride out your garage and you can always always go ride you don't have to pack up or you don't have to see if a track's open or rely on anyone else you're just your own thing so i think uh no matter what i'd i'd for sure be riding but uh i don't know i don't know what i'd be what i'd be doing for for a job or career or in school or i don't know i'd probably probably be in school trying to trying to pursue something uh open your curtains <laughs> do i watch snowboarding um not too much. I see a lot of the stuff on, on Instagram, and uh, I, I think that's kind of like the the main thing to watch stuff on is, is through like posts on Instagram, and I always see the people where they, they go and they do like a manual over the landing and then do like a 360 backflip, and they're like skimming the landing and, and hopping off something with no lip, and that always looks really cool, and they're all smooth with good style. <laughs> this for <laughs> open your curtains behind the window. <laughs> Uh, how confident am I going into Anaheim one? Um, that's always tough because you never really know like what to expect until it's over. But, uh, I've been out here for about a month now and I've been riding, uh, just as hard as, if not, I'd say twice as hard as I have in the years past. And I've, I've switched up a lot of stuff and been, uh, training with a lot more intensity and a lot more laps. And, and I think kind of changed up my mentality and my 
thought with stuff. So um, I'd say I'm, I'm pretty confident, but you never want to be overconfident because that's when everything bites you. So um, yeah, just ready to, to get A1 going and uh, to show where I'm at. Favorite food? Um, definitely pizza. I feel like I could probably eat pizza every meal of the day, whether it's like Jack's Pizza or Domino's Pizza. It doesn't matter, just as long as it's good pizza. Um, when I'm in California, I like uh, In-N-Out Del Taco. It's probably not the best things to be eating, but I'm only 135 pounds, so I can I can afford it, and I need to need to put on the the pounds so that the In-N-Out and the Del Taco is all good. Um, watching Supercross, sweet. Uh, what goes on during your average race day at a Supercross? Um, average race day at a Supercross would be uh, wake up in the van nice and early. Hopefully wake up with a good attitude, feeling ready to go, and then you know it's going to be a good day. Uh, eat some breakfast or drink an Adwala, whatever. Eat some fruit for breakfast. Um, take my bike through tech, take my bike through sound. Uh, get my helmet, goggles ready, gear ready, all that stuff, and then go walk the track. That's always like one of my favorite parts of a Supercross is getting to walk the track. It's always pretty cool to um, see each track, especially with like with me being in California right now. I've been riding Milestone every single day, so I see the the same Supercross track, ride the same Supercross track every day. So it's always really exciting and cool to get the get the chance to ride a new track with different obstacles and and uh all that stuff so yeah it would be um walk the track come back gear up go and uh sit in the stands and watch as much as i can i always like watching the the practices and all the stuff going on at the supercross and then do my practices come back try and refuel rehydrate get all the qualifying done and then between the um practices and the night show go and get something to eat hang out, whatever, and then uh, do the racing and get out of there as soon as I can to get home or get to the next one. Um, what else? Uh, what bike am I on now? Uh, right now I'm riding a 2019 KTM 450 SXF. So I like it a lot. It's pretty similar to last year's bike. It's just a little bit different with the plastic and I think maybe something else, but it, it feels pretty similar to the bike last year. Um, has your family always been supportive of your racing? Yeah, definitely big time. My uh, my sisters have uh, put up with a lot with me racing for sure, and my mom and my dad loves it and goes to uh, as many races as he can, so it, it definitely puts some time apart between us all, but uh, they all support me in the end and know that uh, I'm doing it because I love it and there's nothing else I'd rather do. And uh, my girlfriend, too, supports it, loves it, so we're... Uh, we're all in on it. Um, what do you see yourself doing after racing? Uh, I think I might have touched on that a little bit earlier. Um, I don't know. I'd like to like to try and and become a cop or something something with something with that route. Um, that's what I'm thinking now. Who knows? It changes changes pretty often. So, uh, what has been your gnarliest injury? Uh, my gnarliest injury was probably back uh i think it was in like 2009 maybe i um i compound fractured my three bones across the right side of my hand and uh yeah that was pretty bad that that definitely took the wind out of my sails for a bit so i i uh i think i was like probably 12 or 13 maybe and i had that happen so my right hand was uh you've got your pointer finger, middle finger, ring finger, pinky finger, all running the bones across the top of the hand. And I did the three on the end. So I broke those and I was so young that I couldn't get it plated or pinned. So it was like a jigsaw puzzle of trying to get those to line up straight and the, they healed really good. And then, um, I think a year later I ended up in the same crash. I broke my collarbone and my I finished my hand completely off at that point. I finally did the last bone that I didn't break in my hand, the um, the pointer finger in the hand, not the finger, but the, the top of the hand, and ended up dislocating my finger at the same time too. So I did all that. So my right hand is pretty much, uh, it's had a, a lot going on with that. And I, I ended up getting that pinned and it healed good. And uh, after after a long time of 
a lot of uh, rusty feeling hand. My hand is pretty good. And then uh, I think it was like last year I broke my left hand. So I don't know what the deal is with me in hands, but always, always breaking hands. Um, did your siblings stay in public school? Yeah, all of my, uh, all my sisters are, are stayed in school and um, pretty much it was, uh, it was kind of, once I got to where I was homeschooled, my mom was raising my youngest sister. My other sisters were kind of, uh, they're older than me, so they're kind of doing their own thing. So um, my mom couldn't, couldn't take me places. My dad was always gone at work, so I was always finding people to take me to races or whoever I could to, to, to drive me around to the track. I was always always uh, doing whatever I could to, to go to the races because my parents and family always supported me 100%, but uh, they, like I said, my, my dad was always at work. My mom was always raising my sister, and I never would have wanted them to uh, not be doing that because that's that's uh, that's not right. So I was, I was always trying to, to figure it out as much as I could on, on my own so that it wouldn't impact them as at all. Um, uh, oh. When you leave Axel, do I have any other brands in mind? Um, I don't know. That's a tough one. I I was with Axel for I think almost my whole whole pro career, and uh, I loved the brand. I loved the gear. I loved everything about it. It was it was really good, and and I would have stayed with them till the end if I could have. But uh, unfortunately, nothing ever nothing works out perfectly, and and um, I was thankful for the the time that I had of them supporting me because they were a really good sponsor of mine. And uh, I do have another brand in mind, and uh, it should be should be known here pretty soon. You'll find out. Uh, 250 or 450? Um, I would say 450. I hate riding a 450 outdoors, just because I don't even know why. It's just that it's it's such a powerful bike, and it's so big, and it's heavier, and I'm I'm smaller. That 250 is nice uh, to ride outdoors, just because it's a uh, I think it's a better bike for someone my size, but it's tough to tough to get a fast 250 built and a lot of money to get a fast 250 built. So with a um, with a 450, it's like the past however many years I've been doing it in the 450 class. I've pretty much just been doing it on a stock bike with a um, a pipe and a clutch and stuff like that. Whereas on a 250, you've got to throw so much money at it that it's like it's not even uh, half the time. It's not even worth it. Do I have any brothers? No brothers, just three sisters. Um, how long in advance do I get to view the Supercross track maps? I think they, uh, I think they might even be out now, and uh, I always try and always try and um, look at them in a, like a week in advance or whatever as much as I can. Um, and it's always pretty cool to be able to see them because then you can kind of, you can pretty much look at the track map and get a pretty good idea of if it's going to be a good track or if it's just going to be a typical cookie cutter one with uh not a lot going on so i'm always excited for tracks with a lot of long rhythm lanes and uh difficult stuff to to make it help separate people um any superstitions uh let's see i would have to say um i don't know i don't i don't think so i i try and i try and not worry about that stuff because then once you start worrying about superstitions, then you're superstitious. So I just, I just roll with it. Uh, Pike got injured bad. You now have a second thoughts about turning pro. Um, yeah, the the injury that Pike got was really, really bad. Um, that's a that's a crazy crazy thing, especially to have that happen uh, overseas like he did. And uh, hopefully he can make a full recovery and get back to racing but um he he uh he definitely definitely that was a, a crazy thing but i think uh all of us that race we we kind of know the everyone knows the um the worst case scenario and you just try and try and not think about it as much as you can because your your love for riding your love for the sport is is more than your um fear for what could or what couldn't happen and just like with anything, you could uh, you could get hurt, you know, driving your car down the road or walking across the street or or you know whatever you're doing, you can you can get hurt doing anything. So um, I would say 
you know, you've always got second thoughts with, with whatever, but um, that that's definitely something where it, it opens your eyes even more so, where it's like, man, that's, that's, that's some scary stuff. Uh, do I party after Supercross rounds? <laughs> no, I'm usually uh, straight loading up and getting out as fast as I can to get back home. I think uh, since I've been racing, I think I've only even watched like maybe two main events and all the super crosses that I've done just to avoid the traffic and get going. I think my version of partying would be like going and eating at in and out and getting as much food as I can after the race or, or something like that. Always looking forward to eating after, after the super cross of like starving all day. It seems like, uh, when did I race Foxborough? Um, I think, uh, last year, so 2017 and then, um, also 2016. Have I raced the Monster Energy Cup? Yeah, I raced Monster Cup for the first time this year. I always wanted to do it in the past, but um, it was always tough to get like a invite or figure out how to enter for it or however it works. But this year, I was able to able to get all that figured out and sorted away, and um, that was a super cool race. Always, always cool to um, go do something different and new, and and I've always wanted to do that. Finally, got to do it this year. Uh, what do I think about the YZ65? I think it's awesome. They just need to put linkage on it. I think it's, uh, I think it's just a straight shock to the swing arm from what I could remember. So if they could, if they could put some linkage on that thing, I think it would be a, a really sweet bike. Um, I think it's cool as it is for sure. I think any time that a um, dirt bike company is making more and more dirt bikes, I think that's that's good for everyone. Uh, uh, crazy amount of people in my house. I have to check out. Thanks, Alex. Appreciate your time. Yeah, of course, for my time. Uh, have I had any concussions? Uh, yeah, I think when I was talking about that crash that I had um, way back in the day, I had a pretty good concussion on that one. And then also a lot around when I was on um, 85s and Super Minis. I don't know if it's just with the growing pains or whatever, but uh, yeah, with the... Um, Nowadays, with the uh, concussions for Racing Pro, we have to take a, they call it the impact baseline concussion test. And then um, if you hit your head or you get a concussion, then you can go and you can take the same test over again. And uh, it'll, it'll grade you on if you're not thinking clearly or if your, your head is still suffering from the, um, the side effects of a concussion. But uh, knock on... Uh, Knock on chair here. I guess there's a superstition right there. I've been I've been pretty pretty good with not having to worry about that lately. Uh, am I picky about anything on my bike? Uh, probably just um, I guess with my bars, just low and straight, as low and straight as they can go. And then um, I don't know what else would I be picky about. Sharp foot pegs, yeah, sharp foot pegs, low bars, and. Uh, always like the bike to sit like a chopper <laughs> um any idea why they keep taking toronto off the supercross schedule um i think it would probably just be because it's such a pain for everyone to go across the border and there's so much uh extra stuff for everyone to deal with whether it's the uh the racers or the teams or the track crew or the promoters whatever i think it's just uh like, I love that, that Toronto, Canada Supercross. I think it's a, a really cool round and a really cool city, and it's always a good track and always good crowd and cool setup. It's just such a such a, uh, such a a hassle to get there. So I think that, that probably has something to do with, with them taking it off the schedule. Uh, what place did I get at Monster Energy Cup? Um, definitely nothing to brag about. I think I was like, I think I qualified 30 third or 30 I don't know I made it into the uh made it into the 40 to do the LCQ which was which was pretty good because I wasn't wasn't riding too much and didn't really pre get to prepare for it too much at all either so I was uh it was good to to be able to get in the the payout in the LCQ but that was about it uh favorite tv show would uh definitely have to be Eastbound and Down on HBO or uh the tv show Gotham that's a that's a pretty good TV show. Um, <laughs> when did I race Foxborough? Uh, that would be um, what did I say before? Seventeen, I think sixteen and seventeen. Whenever they last, 
Remember they last had the super crosses there. Have I ever done the Red Bull straight rhythm? Um, yeah, I would. I have not done the Red Bull straight rhythm, but I would love to do the Red Bull straight rhythm. I think that's a, um, I think that's a super cool event, and I think uh, with me being better at the jumping than the turning, I think it would be pretty good at suiting my style. And I think it's sweet that it's it's all two stroke, like they said, and it's uh, it's always really cool to I watch it every year, and I think it's it's pretty sweet. <clears throat> Thanks. Yeah, it'd be cool. Scroll through, see if I missed any questions. I think I got them all for the most part. Uh, if I could change one thing in the industry to help privateers, what would it be? Um, you know, that's a, that's a tough one. I think, uh, one thing that could be changed in the industry for not only the privateers, but all of us would be an increase in payout for the racing from the promoters. And, uh, you know, that's, that's something that whether you're a privateer or you're Ken Roxon or whoever, the, uh, the amount of money that we're getting paid from the people that are putting on the races is, is a joke. And I, I don't think there's anyone that would argue that. And, uh, you know, they say that, oh, you know, your personal sponsors should, should be paying you and this and that. But I mean, at the end of the day, we should, uh, you, you shouldn't be, shouldn't be having to rely on personal sponsors when the, um, the amount of viewers and the amount of people that show up to a supercross and the crowd that it draws and all that stuff. I think, um, a, a pretty, pretty simple place to start with, with helping privateers. And I guess everyone in the sport would be a, an increase in, in payout from the, from the promoters. And then, um, from there, I think it would just be the whole, there's so much of a label on the, like riding for a team and, and this and that, that it's like, you know, whether, whether you're pitting out of your van and you're making a main or you're riding for a factory team and making a main, you're still making a main, but, but people seem to overlook you when you're, when you're out of a, out of, not out of a semi or, or whatever, or whatever you're doing, people always seem to, um, to draw more attention towards the teams. So I think it would be, uh, it would be good if, if there was more attention and people kind of, um, saw things for what it is than, than just the, the big show of the semis and all this stuff, because there's a lot of fast people that are doing, uh, pretty big things out of small budgets and, and small setups, but it gets overlooked pretty often. Um, and yeah, I guess a, another thing would be the, the setup of like parking at every race or whatever is always a nightmare and always unorganized, especially for the, the privateers are always getting the run around and, and always getting the hassle with parking. Uh, let's see if I could get a two digit number, what would it be? Um, you know, 99 would be great. I'd say any two digit number I'd be happy with, but, uh, I guess maybe I think, uh, I guess if I could pick one number, number 62 would be cool for Simo or maybe 51 or 55, like my, my, uh, old numbers or 72 That's always my sister's number. But, uh, if I could get any two digit number, I would be happy with it. So whether it's, whether it's 11 or it's it's 99, I guess it couldn't be 11 because that's a career number. But whether it's the lowest number or the highest two-digit number, I wouldn't care. I'd be happy with it. Um, ping out a van, he is way more viable. Yeah, I agree. Hopefully I can make that happen this year. Uh, if they allow personal sponsors to sell their products, then their response to that would be understood. But when a sponsor is blocked from the promoter making all the money, that's a crock. Yeah, I agree with that. Just like the fact that, um, like riders can't sell their own merchandise and, and they want to have all the control to where they're selling their shirts at the t-shirt stand and everything else. It makes it mighty difficult when, when we're paid as little as we are to, uh, not be able to, to make our own money or, and stuff like that. It's the more and more you look, look into it and the, the deeper you dig with it, kind of the, the worse it looks and the, the more you scratch your head and, and look at it like, what the heck? Um, selling so merch to support your racing. Yeah. Um, anyone that wants to help support me with my racing, uh, if you go to like you live.com, 
and uh, get shirts off that. That's a, a huge help for me and a, a huge help for my sponsors that uh, support me. So uh, that's that's the biggest way I'd say to, to support a privateer, whether you're directly supporting them or whatever, support the people that uh, support the, the privateers and riders that you like because at the end of the day, those are those are the people helping make it happen for us. So whether it's, you know, buying a showy helmet or skivvy underwear or like you live shirt or whatever, you know, it's uh, it, it's all good for for the good companies out there that support people like me or, or other privateers. Uh, racers in any sort of union, would you be able to protest payouts as a group? Uh, no, there is no riders union. And uh, I think that um, it would be tough to, to try and protest payout as a group because um, the top guys don't want to ruffle any feathers because they're making enough money to where the the small uh, purse payout really doesn't matter to them. It's all the all the you know their own individual sponsors paying them, so they don't uh, they don't want to start pro they don't want to rock the boat with their their money that's being made because they're they're happy with what they're getting. Whereas you know people like me and other privateers, we're the ones that uh, really suffer from the the payout but uh if we were to complain it would just be i don't think anyone would care because in the end i think their uh their goal is to go to that whole triple crown format where it's only a 22 rider main or a 22 rider night show anyways like they tried the the last year at the three rounds so i think if um if uh if any of that kind of happened that would be their answer to it and i, I think that you know the the privateer story of someone like me or, you know, whether it's, it's Johnny Bueller or me, you know, the, the true diehard privateers out there, I don't think that's a that's a story that they really care to try and market or whatever, you know, they want the, um, they want like that good, good privateer story of, uh, you know, like, like someone like, you know, Chad Reed, they, they say he's doing, you know, the privateer team where it's like, all right, yeah, I guess you could say it's privateer, but I don't know where you really draw the line at with that, but um, but yeah, so it, it would be tough to to protest pay because I think they would just pretty much say, oh, all right, well we're just gonna we'll, we'll go to the 22, 22 rider triple crown format for all seventeen rounds, and then people like me are left with it's like, all right, well then we uh, we really you know just like with with last year where they did the the three rounds where someone like me I I make the fast forty you know pretty um pretty fr frequently and it's it's good tv time for my sponsors and it's good for them to see whereas you know i at a triple crown round the chances of me getting on tv and getting my sponsors logos in front of eyes is is way way slimmer so it's uh it's definitely it's it's a tough tough way to figure out how to how to get that to change uh, on average you make back your registration fees at a race um you know i would say on paper sure you know but um like when i'm gone in california right now i've been in california the last um i think like 30 or 35 days and and you do the math of you know fuel to get out to california the fuel going back and forth to the track it's 450 bucks a month to ride a super cross track out here your food every day you know and i'm doing it about as cheap as i can so when you're before the season, you pretty much rack up a debt of about, you know, 10 grand or whatever it might be throughout the month of preparing and buying parts or, you know, whatever you got to do, getting your bike ready, getting yourself ready, all the, all the little stuff that goes into it, you, you rack up quite a debt in the month before. And then, you know, Anaheim one comes around and on paper, you've got, I think it's, it's 300 bucks for an entry. It's, I think 250 for your license. My dad gets a hard card. So that's like, I think 400 bucks or something. So, you know, the, the, um, the first race right off the bat, you're, you're shelling out a thousand dollars just in, just in, uh, credentials and sign up fees. So then, um, you know, your first round, if you make the night show, you're making a thousand dollars and that's, that's great and all, but you pretty much just paid off your, your entry fees for the first race. And then you still got that lingering debt of preparing and then, you know, throughout the 17 rounds, you're making, you know, for the night show, $1,000 a weekend, but you're spending, I think it's, like I said, 300 on an entry fee, 
50 bucks for a mechanics pass for whoever you bring with or 50 bucks for whatever guest you bring with and then you add in you know you're not at anaheim anymore so you're having to drive to phoenix or you're having to drive to dallas so um you know i really it, it's it's impossible to to really break even on unless unless you've got money coming in from from other other avenues or sponsors you're uh you're pretty much you're you're all uphill from there so just from the the amount of money that you got to put into it to to get it all started it's it's tough uh how many passes are included for mechanics friends family registration uh none i think you get uh you get one guest but you're paying 50 bucks for a mechanic you're paying 50 bucks for whoever else you bring so there's uh there's not much going on included with that yeah yeah i think people do need to talk about it more often because a lot of people that watch you know supercross on the weekend they don't even you know the uh, the casual fan just like if you were to watch a football game or a basketball game on tv you see everyone on tv and you think they're all you know all those people are are pretty big dollar people but with supercross all the people on you know in the show or on tv it's not the case so it's uh it's a little bit different said that what now keeps you in other priorities wanting to race uh i'd say just the the love for it you know like um it's something that i've done my whole life and it's something that uh i really like that i did with my life and it's it's not something that i regret you know at all so i think uh what keeps a lot of us coming back is just that we're you know we're hardcore we're die hard you know we'll we'll do whatever it takes and um you know, there's always a, you know, your new chapter in life or whatever you're going to do. But um, I think people like to be happy with what they're doing. And, and I'm happy with riding. I'm happy with racing. So, uh, you know, that's that's why I do it. But, you know, just like with anything you do, there's definitely those days where you shake your head and you're wondering what you're thinking. And, and uh, you know, it is what it is. But and then you also have the, you know, the dream of like, you know, you're always wanting to do better. You always think you're going to do better. So, you know, everyone is everyone's trying to be the next you know factory rider or the next two digit guy or the next you know everyone's trying to make a career off racing and everyone's trying to be the best that they can and i think that uh that's what keeps a lot of people coming back too is you're you're always trying to always trying to um get up to that next level uh it's an addiction too yeah i'd, I'd definitely say it's a it's an addiction <laughs> you know just like anything you become addicted to good or bad um, but I'd, I guess dirt bikes are, are a pretty good thing to, to be hooked on. One Canadian race removed from the schedule. It's not aired anywhere in Canada. We have to purchase Supercross Live Pass. Yeah, I haven't really looked into that whole Supercross Live thing and what's going on with the, I think the station changed, but uh, it doesn't sound good from what, I, what I've seen or read and everyone's saying it sounds like you got to pay to watch the races instead of just being able to like flip through the channels and watch it, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I haven't. Uh, looked into it too much cost you to ride and be the show fans really appreciate it thank you yeah i uh it's a lot for sure you call your tour and you're paying that much for the home do you anything else to make money um you know i've uh i've trained kids before and and stuff like that and uh you know buying stuff selling stuff whatever um i've been doing a lot of carpentry work on my parents house siding their house so that's uh that's pretty much my, that's been my, my project the last few years is, uh, siding my parents' home with vinyl siding. And that's, that's been a huge project for me to be doing on my own, but, uh, saved my parents quite a bit of money with me doing it. And I learned a pretty good, uh, new skill and new trade that I'll be able to take with me for the rest of my life, whether it's on my own house or friend's house or, I would never want to do that work for a living, but uh, it's always good to always good to know how to do it. So and to help out my family with that. Uh, Monster Energy Cup was 90 American to watch. The entire 2019 season is way more than that. It's brutal. Wow. Yeah, that's uh, that's not good, and uh, that makes it that makes it that makes it tough to uh, tough for for fans to watch that. So, or, or not to watch it but tough for fans to to try and set that up to watch it instead of just being able to flip through the channels on a tv and and watch the races which also draws you know new people in or whatever so conveniency is always good but when you're having to pay to watch it that makes it tough yeah 
Yeah, it was a lot of work for sure. Still going, got one more side left, and then I'm I'm done. I'm free from free from carpentry. Scroll through some more, see if I missed any questions. I think I got them all. I think that's uh, thank you yeah I'll, I'll definitely need the good luck for sure uh sponsors offering side jobs um you know a lot of my sponsors are all um pretty much in the industry so there's you know it's there's not too many things like a, some people ride for construction companies that they also work for or whatever and and uh that would be cool but i don't have any any uh connections like that or anything so um, no on that, uh, best Christmas gift this year. Uh, I'd have to say my best Christmas gift this year was probably my girlfriend coming out to see me. That was nice. Uh, best Christmas gift, uh, besides that, my life would probably be one year I got a, uh, 16 inch Dave Mira Haro bicycle and that was pretty sweet. So I was, that was a good Christmas gift I'll throw in there. Um. Uh, Yeah, thanks for wanting to help. I appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. I appreciate it. social media um i have my instagram is uh alex naggy 509 and then my facebook athlete page is alex naggy motocross both are pretty simple to remember instagram's probably the most updated and kept up to date with stuff that I post the most on. Yeah, the uh the giveaway is uh trivia based and it's it's a pretty simple one because I, I even wrote it down before I did this as to what the question was going to be about my racing career and um uh the question for the trivia was i guess whoever gets it first because i've already said it uh what was my best outdoor pro national finish and what track My best outdoor pro national moto finish, I should say, moto finish. Someone did get my overall in there. I think uh, we'll go with Benjamin Franco as the winner because he got the, um, he got Washougal and he got 21st, which I think was the my overall finish at Washougal. Even though I got 20th in the second moto, I think I went like 24, 20 for 21st, so... Benjamin Franco gets the gets the giveaway. <laughs> yeah, of course. Thanks for tuning in. Any more questions or anything? Yeah, of course, for my time. 
Thank you. Sweet. All right, well, cool. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you for the, the good luck and everything. And uh, thank you for, for tuning in and hope to see you at the races. And uh, keep uh, keep up with me as much as you can with my, my Instagram at alexnaggy509. And uh, don't, be, don't be shy to say hello at the races or when you see me. Thank you. Yeah, it'll be good to see you at Unadilla. For sure, New Jersey too. Cool. Uh, thanks, everyone. I'm going to log off this or try and figure out how to shut this down. So thanks for tuning in and uh, talk to you guys next time.